Do you want to insert your Power Apps directly into your SharePoint intranet to look something like this? Well, watch this video for a step-by-step -step guide to understand how to achieve this yourself. So there's a number of reasons why you might want to embed your Power Apps directly into SharePoint. Some people do use Power Apps directly from their mobile devices, tablets, or even desktops as a full app experience. But if it's just something that's small and quick and you want easy reminders, so things like expense requests, as an example, are often embedded directly into your SharePoint intranet because you're trying to get people to go to your intranet um, ideally on a daily basis anyway, and it just gets it in front of them so they can see where things are up to. But there's all sorts of other types of apps as well people use for things like feedback or bookings or things like that that they have apps directly built into SharePoint. Now, this is quite a simplistic app that um, we've built, which is all about expense requests. So it means that you can go into the app. So this is what it would look like if you opened it in the full view. But as you can see, because it's designed actually in a kind of portrait mode, so it can be used easily on mobile phones, we don't need this whole space. Like there's loads of space on the left and right hand side of it. And actually it worked much better just inserting it directly into our internet page. So this app, as I say, is available if you wanted to purchase it as, as an app into your own intranet. Um, but um, essentially the way it works is that we can see um, all of our kind of expense requests as kind of like reports. So they're kind of like collections of expenses. We can see them by their status, whether open, if we just created them, if they're pending approval, if they're approved, or um, actually all of the previous ones that we've submitted. We can see what we've got open, so how much um, is left to come through, um, what we've got kind of pending and that's submitted, and what's actually been approved and actually been paid to me. So it's a really simple kind of app in terms of you can go into here. We can say maybe we're uh, going to be creating our January expenses. So I'm going to set it from the 1st of January. Uh, 2024 to the 31st of January. The report title might be say Jan expenses. Now the approver, we don't necessarily need to select somebody. We can have it so you can select somebody if you wanted to. Um, if there was a potential chance that it could be multiple different people that would be approving it. But usually nine times out of 10, the approver for somebody is going to be the same um, every time. So we can automatically set that as well, either based on uh, like a look up to a SharePoint list of, of line managers, approvers, or we can even pull that from Active Directory so you know who your line manager is and that person is the, the approver of your expenses. We can also add additional fields in here as well. So it's nice and easy if there's anything else you wanted to tag it with. Um, so it might be, say, for example, like cost center uh, that you wanted to tag it with. Um, and then when we click on create, um, we've then got um, the ability to start adding in line items against this expense report. So I can then click on add new line item. I can specify the date of which it was spent. So maybe I'll say it was on Thursday the 11th. Um, what it was, so maybe it's a train to London. Um, category would select, say, transportation. And the cost of it was maybe, say, £150. We can then add more line items to that if we wanted to and build that up. And, of course, it'll then total it across the top. Then what happens is when we click on Submit, that will submit our expense request report to our approver. They would get an email um, which would say, uh, hey, Dougie's just um, submitted an expense request. Um, and actually, the thing I kind of forgot to mention is when you're submitting expense request, in the real, this is just the, the, the demo version of it, in the real app, it will also allow me to take a picture. So if I'm using it if on my phone, um, I can either take a picture or I could upload an image of the receipt, for example. Um, and all of this information is then viewable by the approver um, in an email so they can see individual line items uh, and they've got a nice sort of click through way of seeing it all before they approve. Then they approve it and then the email would then be sent to your finance team, your accounts team to pay um, those expenses back to you. And then, of course, it's all marked as approved and you would then get your money and you'd see it all totaling up nicely inside the app. So that's just a high level of what the app will do. Now, actually, let's take a look at how do we embed it directly into our SharePoint intranet. But first, I just wanted to pause for a second to ask a favor of you. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so as we have so much useful content, not only about Power Apps and SharePoint, but as well Microsoft 365, Azure, and the Copilot and other AI products. We host quite frequent webinars, which are hour long, 
deep dives, but we also have these short, smaller videos to give you quick snippets of information and training. We also offer bespoke training, consultancy, development, and adoption plans. So if you want to speak to us, you can always contact us at hello at valto.co.uk and we can arrange for a free consultation. So back to the video. So how do we now get this embedded into our SharePoint page? So I'm gonna go back to my intranet page now. And this is just a out of the box SharePoint intranet. Um, it does look quite nice, styled quite nicely, but there's nothing custom about this at all. It's all using out of the box SharePoint. So if I want to embed this now on my design, I think it looks quite nice having it across the top right hand corner up here. So to do that, at first, I need to put the page into edit mode. So I click on the edit button, which puts the page into edit mode. Now I know it's in edit mode because that button no longer says edit, it says republish. And you can see, I can kind of see all these kind of like different sort of areas, what we call web parts inside of sections. So as you hover over things, you can see um, that I know that I'm in edit mode. So now I want to add my Power App here. So to do that, I'm gonna add a web part. I'm gonna click on the little plus button and anywhere that you find a little plus button, it means you can add a web part. So I could add one here, I could add one here or here. There's loads of different places I could add it to. Then in the web parts search, I'm just going to type in power for power apps. And you then see Microsoft Power Apps. And now this is actually a native web part. It's available for everybody. You click on that and then it's going to say, okay, well, you need to tell me which uh, which power app it is now unfortunately there's no like selector it's not like you're selecting a power app or, or that you have access to you have to paste in there a web link or essentially the id of the app but that's super simple to get hold of it's not complicated at all all we need to do is go back into uh, power apps so to get here all i've done is gone to office.com um select on the app launcher select on power apps and then it's landed me uh, here I then clicked on the apps button on the left hand side to show all the apps I have available to me because we're then going to select the app that we want to put onto our SharePoint intranet. The next thing we're going to do is click on the three dots though and then when it says details we're just going to click on that details option and now what we're looking for is this web link. So this is the URL. So actually if I was to click on this it would actually load up the, the app. So basically if I was to copy that URL and send it to somebody if they were to click on it it would automatically take them to this page for them to view. So this is what I need to get. So I need to right click on this, click on uh, copy link, and then go back to my intranet. And in this app web link box, I'm then gonna just paste in my link for my app. And there we go, it's now appeared on my page. Now, essentially, um, there's the, the, a little bit you can do in terms of resizing it. So if you wanted to make it sort of fit a little bit better, um, you can just drag this little box here just to make it kind of fit. Now, annoyingly a little bit with SharePoint, the layout of the page is slightly different when it's in edit mode compared to when you'll notice when we republish. So you might need to do this a couple of times just to get the layout right, um, just to get it to fit how you want on the page. But once you've kind of got it right, um, all you need to do for everyone else to be able to see this is click on that republish button. If you want to fiddle around a little bit first with the size and you don't want people to see this first, you can always click on save as a draft and that will show you what it will look like once it's published, but nobody else will actually see it yet. Now, as you can see, I, I'm a little bit OCD with my kind of my, my, my kind of spacing here and I would like it just if possible if I can try and get it to match that, that bottom edge to match the bottom edge of that uh, grey box. So I'm going to go back into edit mode. I'm going to select the box again. Just drag it down a little bit further, like so. Let's just try it again. So I'm gonna click on save as draft to see what that looks like. There we go. I don't think I can get any closer than that. I think that's that's bob on. Um, so that fits quite nicely. Now, obviously we can use the app in the exactly same way all through this window. We can add in new requests directly through here. We can view our other requests and it's all inside my, inside my internet page. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's side by side with all the other content as part of my internet page. So once I'm happy that I want everyone else to see this now, and then I'm gonna click on the republish button and everybody else will see this. Um, now, of course, some little kind of caveats of this. You need to make sure that everybody is licensed to use Power Apps. Now, this is an example of a Canvas Power App. So Canvas Power Apps are pretty much included with most licenses that people have, but just double check that. Also make sure that people can access the app as well so that the 
app is shared from Power Apps to people first, so they could actually access the app. Um, so if they could access it through the Power Apps app, if they could access it through that link that we generated before, then they'll be able to access it through SharePoint. Essentially, we're just iframing the app onto the page. So those are just a couple of things just to double check. So I hope you enjoyed that video and if you did, please subscribe to our channel, turn on the notification bell as well and keep an eye out for more um, content related to Microsoft 365 and Power Apps. Thank you.